Hi students, today we are going to be looking at the DNA structure. Okay, so DNA is contained in all of our human cells except the red blood cell, simply because our red blood cells do not contain nucleus. So for that, you will have to revise back on your cells component for the specialty of red blood cells. So coming back to the DNA part, this uh, DNA is contained in almost all of our cells. So each component of the DNA strand is made up of a lot of repeating units. So each of these repeating unit is what we call a nucleotide. Okay, so imagine you have got millions or millions of your DNA strand itself and inside itself it contains all these nucleotides. Now each of these nucleotides is made up of three different components. So we have got the phosphate group here, okay, and we have got the deoxyribose sugar and also we have got the nitrogenous base. Now there are four different types of nitrogenous bases in your DNA. So your DNA basically is a double helix meaning to say that it runs in anti-parallel. So one runs in one direction to the next and the other runs in the opposite direction. So we have got four bases here which we will look at in a while. So if you compare the difference between DNA versus RNA, DNA it says deoxyribose nucleic acid. See deoxy means it does not contain an oxygen, whereas for your RNA it contains an oxygen because we don't see a deoxy here. So in the structural component itself, we can see that the 5 carbon sugar ring, we call it pentose sugar because 5 sided figure means it is a pentose. This one, ribose, contains uh, oxygen, OH group over at the second carbon, while for your deoxyribose, which is your DNA, doesn't contain an oxygen over here. This is the only difference in the DNA versus your RNA structure. Everything else is the same. Okay, So when we move down to the bases here, remember we have got four different nucleotide bases. We call them adenine, cytosine, thymine, and guanine. In short, they are just ACTG. So we have got two different types of your bases. Your adenine and your guanine is under the group called purines because they carry a double ring-like structure. Now pyrimidines, on the other hand, in DNA we have got your cytosine and your thymine. Okay, uracil is found only in the RNA component. So we will look at why if this is so and which one pairs to what. So remember that just now we talked about how the DNA is in an anti-parallel structure. So from one end here, okay, so let's say this is my 5 prime end. We call it this is the 5 prime and this is the 3 prime. As to why this 5 prime and 3 prime in uh, upper levels, then you will look into it deeper. So just for illustration, 5 prime to 3 prime, this is the one strand. The opposite strand runs in the opposite direction whereby it is from a 5 prime end to a 3 prime end. Now all of this here contains nucleotides and each of these nucleotides have to be able to bind in a complementary fashion in the opposite direction here. So each of these lines here represent a nucleotide base that they have to bind complementarily to each other. So adenine will always bind to thymine in DNA. So meaning to say that if over here this is an, an A, okay, in DNA this opposite strand is definitely going to be a T. So likewise, if this is a T, the opposite strand is going to be an A. Okay? So cytosine will bind to guanine. Okay? So if this is a C, this is going to be a G in the opposite direction. So likewise, if the other side is a C, opposite direction over here it is going to be a G. Okay, so this complementary binding is only possible due to what we call hydrogen bonds here. Okay, so hydrogen bonds allow them to bind to each other so that they are able to so-called stick to each other and my DNA helix or this double strand is able to wind around each other in the human DNA. Okay, so hydrogen bonds they are strong enough to keep these components together but at the same time okay when the DNA unwinds and you have got extra DNA that is required so the body needs to make more these hydrogen bonds can also be broken in order for the DNA to unwind itself okay now this is only in the DNA part when it comes to RNA it is a bit more different just a little bit of difference okay so typically A will bind complementarily to T okay 
but in your RNA itself, A will bind to U instead of T. Okay, but if let's say in RNA I have got the T, it is still going to bind to A. Okay, so if the original is a T, it does not change and it still binds to an A. It is only when it is A and it has to bind to T, it does not, it changes to U instead. So this one, it only happens in RNA under a separate process that you will look at at uh, upper sec levels. Okay, so structure of DNA here, so you can see that it goes in the opposite direction. We have got the phosphate group. Over here, I have got my pentose sugar. And over here, I have got my nucleotide base. So each of these component here, every one of it there, this is one nucleotide here. Okay, we have got another nucleotide here. Okay, so one phosphate, one pentose sugar, one nucleotide, uh, one nitrogenous paste makes one nucleotide. So similarly, one phosphate, one pentose sugar, and one nitrogenous base will make yet another nucleotide here. So all your DNA components, they are all made out of nucleotide components. Your nitrogenous base forms in the middle, in the complementary binding, so A with T, okay, this is a double bond, and your C to G, this is a triple bond, okay, so C to G is always triple bond, A and T is always double bond hydrogens. So the backbone, which never changes, is your phosphate group and your pentose sugar. Okay. So when these join together, your nucleotides, each time they join together, when two substances or two little monomers come together and keeps continuously joining, if what well, something has to be lost because after all, you are forming from something small to something big. So what is being lost is water. Okay, so like similarly, when you are forming, for example, when two glucose molecules come together to form one maltose, water is also lost. And that is what we call a condensation reaction. Okay, so condensation reaction, as the name suggests, from condensing, it water will be lost. Okay, so DNA sequence just now over here in the upper part of the example where I showed you, it goes from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. We always read it from the left to right direction, or rather from 5 to 3. So if it is the lower strand, we don't read from left to right, we read from the 5' prime to the 3'. Prime. Okay. The langu DNA language is a bit unique, um, it is always from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Okay. So let's say for example over here, how we will read this is TGCA because this is from the 5' prime to the 3'. Prime. For the opposite strand, we read it from the 5' prime to the 3'. Prime, so it will be TGCA. You can see that it is identical, just that it is running in opposite direction. And therefore, it has to be read from the 5' prime to the 3'. Prime. Okay, so once it combines together, it will wind around together, and this is where we have a double helix. Okay, so double because there are two strands, helix because when it coils together, it forms a helical structure itself. So each of these sections of the DNA, when let's say for example, I have got one particular section of a DNA that I am looking at. So let's say for this section here, it codes for one type of gene. So for example, it codes for the eye color. Okay, This can be another section of DNA bases which codes from a different type of gene, for example, your hair color. Okay, And then moving on, this can be the hair texture. This is the third type of gene, for example. Okay, So which is why here under FYI, genes, they are just segments of DNA. Okay, so they give you a, cert a specific location onto where it is found in the body system itself. So if there is a mutation in one component of the gene, meaning to say one component of the DNA structure, it will affect the body functions or it may affect the body structures itself. Okay, things like which one is the template strand, etc. We will look at it more towards the upper side because you require a bit more knowledge for this. Okay, thank you for looking at the overview for DNA.